deserves an applause. I call someone with the baritone voice will be engaged and just brief uh, my brief you know, citation that is not as brief as that of some of you are seated in this room. Uh, I didn't know that the technical team had a good plan already. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm also delighted to know that the this particular you know subject is a product of some kind of internal research by the NIPR um, for which some of us are am I okay without a microphone? Yeah, yeah. No. no, we may use a microphone. But we don't have to stress on this. No, 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 no. I can So, earlier today, I was, while I was on the flight, I, I was asking myself, why do we want to devote a part of our time today to talking about conflict management, sharing experiences about conflict management. By the way, I'm not here to, I'm not here to instruct or to teach, I'm here to share experiences. You know, with you, I'm going to make it as interactive as we can so that I can also learn um, from you. Is anybody here from the, anybody here from the DSS? Nobody has come to the okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we know ourselves. We know ourselves. We know ourselves. I haven't seen any of my colleagues from the from the DSS around, so I'll, I'll know the kind of examples to, to, to share. I don't want to get a call tomorrow. Then uh, you just see just see the DG at the command at 10 a.m. in the morning for a quick meeting. And by 9 p.m. I'll see the day. All right. Quite interesting that we're here today to talk about conflict management. Most of whom we always talk about crisis management, right? Hello. Most of whom we talk about crisis management because that is when um, everything has gone out of the roof, and then we begin to manage it as a crisis. But the path of wisdom or the path of NIPR today is that we should even learn about the conflicts. We are on the path of the stakeholders that are on the inside of the organization or on the outside of the organization because it is our inability to be able to learn and spot the early signs that often lead to a crisis, and then uh, things then become much more difficult for us to manage. But let me promise you a number of things up front. Number one, the key takeaways from this presentation, I can promise you up front is we will share experiences with one another on how to earn trust of the potential conflicting stakeholders within and outside of our organization because that is what puts us in a position of strength unless the conflicting partners the conflicting stakeholders trust us then most likely more than 90 percent of the chance is that that conflict will lead to a crisis then it goes from a conflict to a crisis, and then the organization is thrown into a crisis. But if you can manage the conflict, the likelihood is that it will not blossom, snowball into a, a, a crisis. So therefore, you will, we will share experiences among ourselves about how to end the trust of conflicting partners. Because every organization, be it the NNPC, be it the Navy, be it 
uh, evil spirits that are probable conflicting partners, conflicting stakeholders who have conflicting interests in within within those organizations. Number two, we will understand the very character of conflict itself. Because most often, we ignore the conflicts, and then when the pain that becomes a crisis, we then start managing it. But usually, if we check the early warning signs, we will realize that they have been there before, but we just didn't pay attention. So, we would also understand the conflict evolution stages, how conflict evolves in any organization. And then, of course, the conflict life, life cycle itself, and then understand even the idea of conflict management itself. And let me disappoint you a little bit. The truth is that even sociologists have said not all crises. Can be resolved. Not all conflicts can be resolved. You can't resolve all conflicts, but you can manage them. Right? You can manage them. This is settled among scholars. In other words, you will understand the process of conflict management. You will understand the very popular Thomas Kilman's diagnostics for conflict. How to look at conflict, how to manage conflict. And then the skills, the soft skills, we as the public relations practitioners need to be able to manage conflicts within our organization. We will share them amongst ourselves. And it is my hope that when we get back to our offices, it's, we are going to step into a new pedestal of influence. And that's the, that's the reason we all we all paid money to be here. Uh, we don't want to get back to our offices and we we'll continue with the same of the same. The former governor of Lagos State, now the Minister for Works and Housing, the day after, no, I think two days after he left office, I called him in the morning and we were speaking and he said, I want to say a special thank you to you. He said, you know what? He said, you are one of those guys who will go and make friends with my enemies so that I can be at peace. That is our role as the conflict managers in our respective institutions. That is our role. I want to end the trust of the conflicting partners, then life becomes easier. Let me show you this announcement. I'm sure many of you must have seen this meme. <laughs> announcement. The reconciliation meeting has been cancelled because the agreed parties could not agree on the venue. <laughs> this submitted white news some months back. So they could not even agree on the value of where the reconciliation meeting that will take place will hold. Now, you know what has happened there. I spoke earlier about ending the trust of probable conflicting partners in your organizations. Somebody has lost that position to be able to say, okay, all right, since you are the conflicting partners. Let the meeting hold in my office. And that person is seen as a neutral person, and they all earn that person's respect. And this can be even amongst employees. And you just realize that somebody will tell you that, oh, the HR manager has already taken sign with the other with the other camp. So I don't want to talk to her. And then the onus then falls on you. As a public relations person who understands the process of conflict management to be able to solve this problem. So let's begin to take a dive into the whole idea of you know, conflict. Um, I mean, they are natural, they are very natural, you know, and they are inevitable. Even as we are now, if we convert this hotel to Big, big Brother House now, 
and we say all of us should be here for 90 days, you will see conflict. That's when you will know that when white people were speaking earlier, that all of us were clapping. Then that's when certain things will suddenly just play up and conflict will start. Now, it is natural, and it is inevitable. But the management more process must be understood. And then, of course, it's complex, it's controversial. Um, there is the conscious part of it, and there is the unconscious part of it. There are people who are conflicted with certain people, and they are unconscious of it. They are unconscious of it. And they are just conflicted with certain people, and they are unconscious of it. And because they are unconscious of it, those people on the other side feel offended. And that can affect. That can determine whether the organization becomes functional or dysfunctional. Just that alone. You know. I say, why is it that you don't like me? Who you are only. I just don't like him. I say, why? What things? I can't you work in a team with me. I just don't like that. Guy. <laughs> and you know what? Who you are only. He's oblivious of that fact that there is somebody that is a stakeholder with me who just doesn't understand. But the good thing is that we are here today. As public relations practitioners to share ideas how you support those early ones from just ordinary conversation during lunch break and somebody makes an off the cuff comment about someone you can see you can pick the early sign that there are some conflicts here and then of course uh the eventual outcome of conflict can actually be adequately determined or predicted. You, you, you will see those things, but you can't predict where is this going to end. Do we need to advise each other that it's just to this person from this department or whatever? But let's let, let's keep moving. You will see where this is taking us. So Henry Fletcher is one very respected American sociologist who said. Who tried to define conflict and said the process or the situation in which two or more human beings or groups seek actively to threaten each other's purposes, to prevent each other's interests, even to the extent of injuring or destroying the other. I will share a case study very soon. Don't worry, just, just be patient. Let's go. So then he also said, in the process of conflict. Men struggle against one another for the attainment of the same objective. That objective can be as simple as I want to be the most influential person in this department. And then someone else also feels the same way. Now, can you see that they have the same objective, right? They both have the same single objective. And that single objective has brought them into conflict because you want what I want. It's like as a single person, you see a thing, you like the thing. Your friend now basically says it to you that I like that thing. I would like to take that thing. Why not start? This is as simple as how the exercise of conflict can be. So a conflict situation, most of whom can be. Most people or multi person are appear, and there is a conscious ambition to defeat or terminate either a second party or a third party or a, a third party's purpose or a simple at the expense of one's own. I want to make sure that this department, when I speak, it's my voice that management listens to. That's an objective. But it has brought that person in conflict already with someone else who also has the same objective. That I want to be the most influential person in this department. So achieving this will induce destruction of injury, conflict of interest, maybe get towards the same objective. Like I said earlier, the two of them may have two conflicting partners, may have the same objective. So Louis Arapondi, a professor of business administration. Has this to say, the conflict can take on any of several different forms in any business or in any organization. This can be the Navy, it can be the ESC, it can be the CBN. There can 
can be conflict on the board. There can be conflict among board members. Conflict among management staff. But how do you, as a public relations professional within the team, recognize this conflict? And it can occur within or even amongst employees, amongst individual groups within the organization. It usually appears as a struggle between incompatible or struggling needs or ideas. Sometimes those things manifest, they will disguise themselves into meeting as ideas. Um, I think the, this is how we should prosecute the anti corruption war next year. And so somebody might say, no, 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 that won't work. You see, in Uganda, when this was done, in 19, uh, it never worked. Now, the truth is that, that both of them have the same objective, but they have conflicting. So they have disguised their conflict in the form of struggling ideas, competing ideas, and interest amongst, amongst themselves. So, how does conflict therefore then manifest? Sometimes it can be very organized. That is when you call it and say, okay, let's meet, let's meet during lunch time. You see that agenda that that woman was pushing at the management meeting today. We need to give it. Now it's organized. That guy type of conflict is organized. Then there's the disorganized one. You just realize that those people were just pursuing their interest. There was never any conscious, you know, decision amongst themselves to say, we are going to fight group A or we're going to fight group B. So that's a disorganized form. There's an enduring one, there's this transitory one that is just I just have to switch you and in the month it's over. Everybody comes back, you know, to to you know to relating work. The physical, there's the spiritual don't get it. Hey, one of the things psychiatrists have said is that about schizophrenia is that one of the most difficult set of human beings to deal with is a schizophrenic patient. Now you know the thing, the wear suit and die. Okay? They wear suits, they wear die, they wear nice dresses. But the thing is that there are other they are off, they are off, operating at another level entirely. And you may just make a comment. And the other red, you know, in interprets that comment to be that what he has just said is that you are not well dressed. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm serious. I've, I've seen this. And the next thing, he will go to the office on a Saturday, carry his pastor, carry everybody, and they'll start binding, calling down fire, calling down everything. You know, and all of that, I say, this woman is after me. This is the case I never look with after me. Look at the comment she made happy. So, conflict can be spiritual. So, you can imagine our, our, our lives, our work is not easy as public relations people. So, imagine, so we are also solving spiritual problems. <laughs> and sometimes, intellectual, the person just goes on to some dogmatic. You know, ideas that he probably read from Karl Marx, even when communism has collapsed. And the man is still saying that, and you are discussing a social housing policy. And he jumps on it with his Marxist, you know, uh, uh, orientation. And then somebody says, Look, this thing is not sustainable. I say, What do you mean? You are, you are an enemy of the people. Now, you know what? What has left that conflict is is intellectual orientation. So this is this is the manifestation of conflict. It can be transitory, physical, spiritual, intellectual. Now, it can then lead to either the organization going through what is called either functional conflict and the dysfunctional conflict. The functional conflict tend to add to the overall performance of the individual or the group. You know why? 
there is subtle on the learning psychological feeling of competition. We need to defeat that department. We need to defeat that other thing. So you will find psychologists and sociologists that are saying that maybe, maybe there are scholars who say maybe this functional conflict they actually grow for the growth of organization, but somebody must keep the eyes on on the conflict and the manifest. So in other words, especially when you look at large organizations like banks, you know, that will have different, you know, marketing teams, you know, and all of that, it becomes something, you know, very positive amongst them because they want to make sure that they defeat the other group in terms of their in terms of their heading. And the dysfunctional one tend to create hindrances, of course, to the individuals and then to the group. So, what are those impact, informal factors and societal factors um, that shape organizational conflict? Basis of different set of facts. Now, so the fact that Team A asked about that particular issue that is happening. At Ancom is different from the set of facts that another set are. And so already a conflict has started. And then you also have the perceptual, that's the, those are the informal factors. You also have the perceptual factor where the persons have different images of the same stimulus or each interpret the information based on its own. You know what comes to mind the case study? Have you ever seen? Our senior advocates, when they won't ruling the stimulus from the Supreme Court, one will be on channel. I say, This is what that ruling means. Another one will be on a right TV. I say, No, 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 that's not what it, 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 it means. This is what it means. And then everybody has, but it's the same factor, but different interpretation. And then the role factors. Individual of certain positions or status in the society or in the organization. And that status or that position may place them within certain constraints because of certain things that they You know, the, the, the I don't want to be accountants. They are usually the most hated people in most organizations. People don't like them because they believe that they're the ones not allowing us to spend money. That the ones not allowing us to spend money. So that already, their role, their role of financial controllers, their role of trying to establish control about how we manage our inflow and our outflow as an organization has brought them in conflict with some people. So people want to spend money. Their name is Mr. Nimbabu. Money. Must be spent. That's the meaning of that name in Yoruba language. Need not know. And there's a financial controller who says, hey, no, we can't spend like that. We need to save for the rainy days. And who is rainy day? It's already rainy. Let's spend now. <laughs> Remember it happened between the governors and the government. When the governor said, no, it's already rainy now. Let's spend this windfall now. And the federal government said, hey, let's keep it. Something may happen. So those role factors, those are conflicts that come off the back of role factors. Then conflict evolves through different stages. There is a state that the latent state um, when it is under the subject. And that is where our experience sharing really comes in, into play now. How do you spot something that is still under the surface? It has not yet happened, the conflict has not yet happened. They have not had an open quarrel, but there is a conflict already amongst our stakeholders, board members, management, staff. They have not expressed it openly. That is where we begin to spot the early, early warning signals. And that's why we, as we are practitioners, can do a better job than even our colleagues in HR because we can listen to both 
the said and the unsaid. When somebody says, mm -hmm. you know the person has not said anything, but you, as a PR person, you can interpret that sir, to me that this person has a reservation about this person. And so you can dig in for that. When Mr. Francis made that comment and left the room, you, you, this was your, your, your question suggested that you have, said, yes, I, I don't like it. Ah, so I get the end warning signals. Now, the HR people may not, they may not follow that bit. But we are we are people, we are trained in both the verbal and the non-verbal. Keep your eyes on the non-verbal. That's where the early signs of conflict usually reside. Keep your eyes on the non-verbal. At management meetings, outside of management meetings, at lunch time, at social gatherings, when you have members of your team, keep your eyes on the non-verbal. When you follow your MD to a meeting where all the directors of the company are. Keep your mind, keep your hand, eyes on the number. That is where the any signs of conflict, you know, reside. So it goes to then the trigger points, spur of the moment, specific incident then happens. Maybe they then have a, a shouting match at the meeting one day. You now remember because you are installing the any signs. We are trained as PR people to focus on the number that you saw how that person reacted. I think the bounded arm is beginning to take its toll for some of our members. Can we have coffee, please? So, and then it goes to the stage of conflict where assumptions now become open. She doesn't like me. She doesn't like me. Now, how did you know? No, who told you she doesn't like me? No, I just know she doesn't like me. And you know what? It's just an assumption. And then they move from there to labels. And what's meant by labels is when people begin to call themselves names. You know, names. They begin to stigmatize themselves with certain names that are not too complimentary. Hmm. Peacock. Peacock. She's coming. <laughs> because it's coming up. Or oh, because you, the other person, is an introvert. And then the other person is also the mild introvert like me. You then call us parrots. <laughs> we all hear this thing. Those are warning signals. Those are early warning signals. Focus on those things. When you begin to hear those labels, Focus on those things. Those people have conflicts of ideas, of interests, and all, and all of that. And or when they begin to build alliances, the in Yoruba palace, they say, ah, I want to be my own crew under the same company, same corporate philosophy, same vision. And then you begin to hear ah, this, my inner circle. Once you begin to hear it as a PR person, focus. Those are the early warning signs that there are confidence. There are confidence. Yes, sir. Is, is it possible for somebody to be sensitive about uh, keeping your eye on the ball? So, we, is it possible for somebody to be sensitive that you are keeping your eye on the number of mm -hmm. in the fact that you are shopping for gossip or you are nothing around? So that that information is actually meant for your processing. Okay, let me give you an example. Last week, are we streaming online? Ah, no, I won't share this. Example. I won't share. This I won't share. This example. So. The point we are trying to make now is that because the example involves the serving minister, so I don't want to share. Now, so the point is that you are not you are not doing it for the purposes of telling somebody else. We are doing it because that is our own calling as PR 
practitioner, that we are also conflict managers. So I'm able to dissect, I'm able to understand behind every word that is a spirit and a state of mind. So think of it, why did Mr. Alex refer to Mrs. Ungobi as parrot? You understand? And then you begin to think, then you watch out. You will realize that if you keep your eyes on 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 that person very well you will see some consistency that will tell you that there is a conflict here brewing and our own role as tr managers and as conflict managers is i mean there are multiple ways you can you can decide you can deliberately decide to start planning some social outing with the two of them something as we need to as that. You know, as you convert over food and drinks, later they now realize that we really have differences. It's just that this person has what is called POV, point of view. And that's why he's always talking, because he has a point of view. I don't have a point of view about that particular subject. And then you interpret that person to be a part of yes, sir. Don't ask me all the questions. <laughs> Share your experience too. <laughs> okay. Yes. That means there has to be some kind of personality type. Absolutely. For a conflict, uh, a PR person who is adapt at this kind of conflict management, because you're also talking about emotional intelligence. I mean, so my question is. Ah, you don't ask the question. I thought you were helping me. No. <laughs> To what extent, if you're somebody who, uh, you know, there are some people who are naturally, uh, who have that natural talent, uh, can it, can this be learned? Can you train somebody to have those insights? Because, I mean, you can't have somebody who's a narcissistic personality, for example, to be a PR uh, manager. Or, or somebody who has, who just takes things at face value and flares up and so on. So, can you train somebody to be like that, or is it something that is uh, an inbuilt talent? So, can I, can I say something there? Oh, he wants to help me. Yeah. He knows I'm not very intelligent, so we are uh, <laughs> what do I rest you? Yeah. Uh, I, I think um, it's, it's, it's two ways. Now, I, I'll, I'll first. Um, a question Can you learn it? Yes, it's two and ways. Is it you something can, that comes? Is it something that's just in it? So it's, it's both in ways and can be learned, but now depends on the deliberateness you. of you the person. Have, you have actually answered the question. It's both in it and can be learned. There are forms of materials of emotional intelligence, you know, online today. And there are books on the emotional intelligence. It can both be in it. There are people who are just gifted. There are people, and mostly, let me say this to the credit, mostly women. You know, if there is a narcissist, if there is a narcissist <laughs> amongst us here, if there is a narcissist amongst us here, the first person that is likely to notice that person is a woman. She may not say it. From his business <laughs> Not necessarily so. Not necessarily so. We, women, women decode, women decode body language, women decode spirits more than we we are. I think we are too concrete. <laughs> so, so the conflict, so the conflict state can also then become a, a, a state where people then become entrenched, you know, in their views and in their position. I'm not going to change. There's nothing you say about it. Like, you cannot convince me. They become they now. So, and then of course, you then move from there to the equilibrium stage, where as a result of your own efforts, people now begin to understand one another's POV, point of view. Okay, is that what he was trying to say? Mm, that's what he was trying to say. He didn't say it well, but that's what he was trying to say. 
But you will now understand in this in the subsequent slide what we ourselves, as we are practitioners, the skills we ourselves need to be able to get to that place. You see, we'll see this in subsequent slides. Okay, so this is just for us to know. I promise that we'll look at the, the conflict evolution uh, uh, stages as we as we go along. Okay, uh, this just speaks about the the life cycle of the conflict, you know, I've already alluded to this, start from the latent state, then the conflict emerges, then it becomes escalated, then there is a stalemate, you know, amongst the, amongst the, 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 the group. So the, the point I wanted to make, there was something that happened recently, and all of us read about it on the pages of the newspaper, because the early one inside were there. The early one inside were there. But somebody missed the early one inside. It was the latest, it was the most recent crisis at the first bank. Okay, between Portugal and Fleming of the ask somebody on the inside that bribery to overtake each other at the death for some time amongst some of the key players. Those were the people whose names were in the public domain, but there were other people at the back. So that's I just wanted to use that to spread the word I said again that when the conflict management phase, if anyone is signals were in, you know, I know. Then, what begins as just a conflict that snowballs into a crisis and engulfs, you know, the conflict. So, of course, we go to them, the negotiation stage. Uh, they also have to go to, and then of course, the dispute settlement stage, and then we then go to, the, you know, post conflict, to get to the peace building stage. So, get us have the consultation. Let's talk. At least this time around, we can we can agree on a neutral venue. So that we can make. So unpacking the concept of conflict management. Oh, like I said earlier, all conflicts cannot be necessarily resolved, but they can be managed. Learning how to manage conflict can decrease the odds and the non-productive escalation. I mean, it can become a distraction to the organization. And that's why we're here. That's why we're talking about it. It can become a big, a big problem for the organization. And so it's an essential part of even our own work. And then, of course, understanding you know the, the process. Let, let me skip this and just go to because I still have something that explains it. So, therefore, conflict management is the process of limiting the negative aspect of conflict while increasing the positive aspect of conflict. Now you can see that this definition never says. To eradicate it, you can't eradicate conflict for as long as you have human beings that who will have who will have different perspectives, who are raised from different homes, some polygamous, some monogamous. Then the other people are even trying to add their own to it now, you know. So, with the aim of inducing learning and group outcomes. How do we, in, this is why we're here, how do we ensure that we can solve it? So achieving this is dependent on strong understanding of the conflict and evolution stages that we've, we've talked about, the early indicators that I've spoken about, and mastering the conflict management, you know, standards. And then Matt, this will also speak to part of what you said, the early Indicators and one inside unusual body language. Let's note it colleagues not speaking to each other or ignoring each other. Let's watch out for those for those things because we we are public relations people. Let's watch out for those those things, those signs in our organization and in our team. Deliberate undermining or non cooperation amongst themselves, unnecessary contradiction and bad mouthing. Some people just because the person thinks that this person doesn't like me. 
and every management meeting, when the person says A, the person will M, I have a contrary opinion. I have a contrary. Watch out. Those are, and you just realize that that person hasn't said anything useful. You just wanted it to be on record that I opposed what. So those are early warning signs. Unbridled desire for power. There are people who will just be in our team like that. Who have unbridled desire for power. They want to be in control. Not necessarily because they are being paid makes them so, but you want to be in control. Those are early, those are people, those are avengers of conflict. They are carriers of conflict. You know, hearing disagreements through the media, I mean, that's when everything begins to fail, they go to the media. And then, of course, strong public statements, they say some things that are very strong, that are very unhealthy about, you know, some of their, their, their other co cool stakeholders. Or information withholding, there are people like that. It's some organization. He knows that there is a document that this other person needs to be able to do the presentation that management is doing. He will withhold it. He will withhold it. Let's watch out. We might be the ones even advising HR on what to do. This is why we are here. And then, of course, lack of clear goals can be an early warning signal. You just have, you know, an entire team, and then you ask, you know, what are we, what are we, what's our goal for this quarter? And then you realize that everybody has a different interpretation of what our goal is. Or if people has a different goal, it's an early warning sign that that organization is is heading for, you know, full blown conflict. And then of course, factional meeting, factional meetings on general issues. Oh boy, let me open my office, let me open my office, let me open my office. After I manage my meeting, I will go to another office and meet. Once you hear those things, know that it's an early warning sign that there are conflicts within your organization. And then, gross use of threatening slogans or, or symbols. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned earlier. So, this is what the Kilman Diagnostics you know, it's all about that when we look at our organization, we can actually adopt different conflict management, you know, you know, approaches. You will see, you will see that you we know, will see that this is what people do. There are those who are just cooperating on this side, they are avoiding, they are avoiding the conflict. They don't want to meet, they don't want to hold, they don't want to be part of any meeting that Mr. Sinkecha and Ivalo will be, will be a part of. Now, they are avoiding the conflict, but they are not solving the problem. And then, of course, we have the, the outright competition where different conflicting groups are competing. And then, of course, we have how it can take us to the state of collaboration and accommodating one another. This is why Hilman now said it takes us to the state stage of cooperative cooperative cooperativeness, when which is a fusion of two words. Which is a fusion of two words. We cooperate, but at the same time, that was an aspect of the, that's the manifestation of the functional conflict that I spoke about. An organization can have con functional conflict. That sociologists even say it is cool. They have functional conflict because different things are pursuing the same goal and they want to, they want to outreach one another, they want to beat one another in terms of records. So, since if you look at it, you can use this model to find out how people are treating conflict in any organization. But however, I say this is the best approach where you as a PR person cannot make the conflicting stakeholders make some compromises. 
But for them to make some compromises, they need to understand each other's position. And that is our role because we are also communicators. We are able to bring clarity to the mumbo jumbo that some of them will express in anger. So, madam, so this is this in essence is what we are trying to say. She said, Yes, so, okay. and you too. This in essence is what you are trying to say. So can you can you see that if you shift here a bit, there is a meeting point for the two of you. That's our role. That's our role. That's bigger than what HR can do. Because we are able to distill very convoluted ideas that people are carrying in their head. We're able to distill them into very simple point of view. So this is what you are trying to say after quoting Marx and Marx and Lenin. And is this what you are trying to say? Yes. And you, is this what you are trying to say? Can't you see that if you if you if you look at this particular point of view, both of us can work, both of you can work together. I say, well, actually, it's true. That's our role. That's the role of a peer person in conflict management. Let me give an example. I can give this example. Why do you abuse me? You know, you remember I said I'm an APC stalwart. <laughs> in actual fact, I'm not an APC stalwart. I just happen to be a consultant to a number of APC doctors and ministers. Now, but you know what? And I'm saying this for those of us who are still going to have the opportunity of being consult. In, in the build up to the 2020 election, do not die in their war. And ensure that you end the trust across, across the divide. Let me give it, let me share this story. I can share it now. In 2007, Eleven agreed, we're calling it ACN then. Eleven agreed governorship aspirants in Lagos were, were fighting Ashwa Jubala Ahmed. And I happen to be one of the few people that we talked to all of them. So I was going round the house to say, which one of you? Can compromise, can at least share his or our own ambition and be deputy to this person. And then, no, 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 no. This one. He met me in politics. I've been in politics since 1979. How can I be a deputy? No, no, no. So I was going around. So you know what? I earned the trust of all of them. So I could go around and I saw that they all had conflicting points of view. And I knew that they would never succeed. And they never succeeded. And they never succeeded. Today, so they, they say, excuse uh, me, off the mic, off the mic, off, off the camera. There was a guy, I saw him on Facebook abusing a particular.
and connect some of these people. We always make them come back to the table. That's our own position. We must end the trust that when there is a conflict in our organization, do not be a member of any of the camps. Be the one that all the camps will trust that they can talk to. Yes. I'm actually looking for specifics. Specifics. What tools are you deploying to be able to get your principal to trust you even when you're hobnobbing with your enemies? I want you to tell us what tools are you using? You know, just something we can do, can work with practical steps. Please be honest, you know, with us so that we can <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, I, well, I wanted to reserve my question for the end before, but since you are taking some questions, and mine is related to us. You know, when you started, you talked about um, certain times when there is something that looks like a zero sum game where two people are in conflict, but your game appears to be my loss. You gave example of maybe two people are looking at the babe or something. Both of them cannot have her. Or you mentioned any your examples a number of times. She's our queen now in this, uh, in this this place, and somebody else wants to be the queen, and both of them cannot be the queen together. So how do you resolve such a conflict? Especially when such people have not read the uh, sleeping COVID book, knowing that you can think queen queen and they don't know uh, what Skype and was talking about when it was that the sky is big enough for all of us. And they believe that I must get this and you also want to get it. So how can you resolve such the conflict? Thank you. One, one word. One word answers both questions. And I will be totally honest with you. One word answers this question. Boy, phrase. Your trust quotient. <clears throat> your trust quotient amongst competent partners. Once it is lost, then the game is lost. Now, regardless of how the nation they are to their people, if they trust you, if they trust your journey. And I've got, I've gotten so much, in, you know, even for people, but even for myself, from that, from that former God, you understand, that I will go and meet him because I know he's very influential, you know, at the highest level. I might go and meet him and say, this person needs things. And say, okay, uh, where is that? Uh, who is in charge? So, so, now, you know what? It's because of trust. And that is why Ashwa Jun Tu does not see me as going to his house to probably go and share some secrets with, with him. And that's the point I'm trying to make. That we, as public relations practitioners, we must end the trust of all the parties, even in the company. Even in the company, we must end the trust of all the parties. Even in the company. And that's why they can actually even come to your house for a meeting. Or you can go to their homes and sit with them and say, you know what? I do want to understand what these issues are. So that's why I said, don't just one phrase answers, and that, and, and I'm being totally honest, as, as Madam said, that that's the tool that we have. That's the asset we must never lose. And that's why there are certain ways they will say to you in confidence. You know what? The current Minister for Works and House once said to me, uh, okay, we are still we are still online. That's the main reason I would have loved to say.
in that position of authority and influence that when the serving commissioners cannot tell the governors how they did, they will call you and say, please, go and help us speak to Mr. Governor about this thing. That we don't want him to attend that event. There are so many events that this small me, I have stopped the governor from attending because he says we call we don't want Dr. to go for that. Why? Say this, 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 this. I said, okay, no problem. And I'll call you. If I don't, if I don't go for that event, too. you will send the representative. So we must also get to that level of trust. And so that's why I say our trust motion. Yes, sir. Thank you. The theme of the conference is communication for the 21st century leader. Uh, she asked a question about qualities, whether they ought to be innate or they ought to be acquired. Some years ago, but when I when I when I got married, my pastor was the sole counselor. Shortly after that, maybe because of the size of the congregation or something. They formed what they call a marriage counseling committee. And I was a sole campaigner against the marriage counseling committee because my argument was that my pastor was trained to keep secrets. Those marriage committee members are not so trained. Question I'm asking and I'm thinking aloud. Is there something in the training of public relations personnel that requires that we have this skill of keeping secrets so that we can always be trustworthy when parties are in conflict? Thank you. Maybe you will not kill me with this question. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, like I said, we always forget that the bigger part of our work is counseling. You know, we are busy doing media relations, we are busy doing events, and so on. It's counseling. And a, a very important part of that is one, like I said earlier, in the presentation, logic analysis. And the secret, so public relations cannot work effectively in an atmosphere of distrust. The reason why people are turning to you, let's follow what he said, why somebody, he may, the, the governor will check for his message in the morning because he trusts him as a source. And in trusting him, we need to do our own information management, which includes what you have said, what do I say? And I think he also said that he's going to talk about emotional intelligence. So it's not everything you know that you say. And you are right, it's the liberalization of some aspects of religious services that makes us do this kind of thing. That people who are not trained are supposed to be marriage counselors. Somebody who is not managing his own home well. This is a counselor. You understand? You know? So I, I agree with you. I think that you remember what I said. This is a jack of all trades and master of one. It is or not even all, many. Many. You know, there was, I just ran up with this, uh, tried to use myself as an example. There was some lady who was with the Lord in my church for a child. And then she told me what they called their side and said, Ah, thank God. God has done it. I've taken it. Ah, congratulations, Daddy. Don't tell anyone who tried to find So maybe about a few months later. By the way, my wife can come and say, What's wrong with this lady? Is she pregnant? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked my wife, How would I know? You understand me? I know. So, I what know is, something. 
And you know something? And I know. <laughs> so when the three of us were together, and she now was talking about ah, this issue of pregnancy, you know, what she's been doing, or something, something. So my wife now said, ah, how am I supposed to know you're pregnant? Just saying for what you're saying. She said, ah, you me tell you. I told you, I mean, now. I now said, ah, when you said to me, don't tell anybody. Did you say, don't tell anybody? But your wife. I said, your wife. He said, no. I said, you told me, don't tell anybody. And I didn't tell anybody. So my wife knows to tell you that. So when people say to her that, ah, but I told you, he said this one. If you don't tell me, you won't tell me. So it's a very essential part. Let me tell you what the essential part of it is. Trust building. So if you think it tells me some things. <laughs> if it tells me some things, she can be rest assured that she can't hear it anyway. She can't hear it. And one of the things that um, we must do as publication practitioners, we must listen more and talk less. Because when you are talking so much, you tend to spill. So I, I, I let me finish on this one. Like, my mother-in-law was the first registrar of the University of Lagos, the very registrar of Lagos. And a friend of mine became the pro chancellor, uh, the senator of the show. So he picks up his phone one day and calls me and says, I your mother-in-law was there. I want to know how you run a university. She was sent to your council. I'd like to meet her to tell me that we are back. So I fixed up the meeting for him and I. Then my mother-in-law saw me later and said, you know, that man is very remarkable. Do you know I was talking for two hours? He did not say one what he was just writing. <laughs> and he was just nodding and he was not writing. You know, we must stop. You can't be doing my rose rose to take that on your own. In such a way that your client or your or guy is telling you something. And then you know that that way you are talking is small. If you see what happens to me. <laughs> you know, so uh, I just feel that um, that's a part of it. Thank you. Exactly. Power is nothing without control. 
Yeah. So you must learn to use that power you have. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we are masters, supposed to be masters of all. It's only in public relations to find that somebody that read history is, is uh, uh, expected to read the statements of accounts. Is expected to understand the rudiments of medicine. Is expected to know some empirical data. And yet, he had no, he didn't read it. So, what do you do? Update yourself. As a peer practitioner, you must read books on answer. You must know about your freedom of uh, information bills. You must know to what extent you can disclose. When should you disclose? Because your MD will not be there to tell you what to disclose and what not to disclose. But based on your uh, skills, based on your knowledge, based on your discretion, based on your analytical scanning of the environment, you are able to make decisions that will help the organization. So let's try. I want to. I want to make sure that I round off so that people uh, we can make more. Like I did say, it's not a lecture. It's not a. It's not an instructor's role. I'm here to play it's about experience sharing. So these are some of the skills that we also need. She alluded to one of them already: active listening. Um, there are people. I met years ago, and when I meet them now, I will go and pay my notes part of that particular year. I will bring it as in when we met on social. Remember, we said this, 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 and I said this, 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 this. You know, have you seen that this is what I? One of the one of the things that we, at time will not allow us that we. As PR people must also be very good at is what is called predictive analytics. Predictive analytics. Now, you take all of those. So, for example, our colleagues from the EFCC, your your digital and social media team submit a, a report to you, an online sentiment analysis that shows what Nigerians are discussing about the EFCC, and you look at it. I can look at it, I can look at the piece of the report, and I will go to the channel of the EFC and say, this is what people are going to be doing within the next five years to escape, to escape our scrutiny. It's called predictive analytics. So sometimes when you are listening, when you're doing active listening, you are able to do predictive analytics, you are able to know that this person that is talking to me, if given the opportunity, will do X, Y, Z. And you, therefore, you will, predict, you will predict that this person will do X, Y, Z, and you can plan for it. So, and of course, we have to be, we have to also be negotiators. We have to be negotiators. Let me give an example. Again, during the time of Mr. Baba today, Raji Pachola, as governor of Lagos State. There was a prolonged doctor's strike and negotiation had broken down. The doctors were no longer coming for meeting. The government side was not ready to shift down. So on Friday, I called him. I said, You're at the I said, Where are you? He said, I'm in the office. I want to come and see you. He said, Okay, you can come. So I drove straight to his office. He said, What's up? I said, now I want to bring the doctors back to the negotiation table. He said, please, if you can do it, I will be more than delighted. And I left his office in the end of 15 minutes, made calls, and by Saturday, I brought the doctors back to the negotiation table. Now, because they just needed somebody they could trust who had the, the governor's head to be able to tell the governor that this is what the HOS and your 
health commissioner are not telling you. And so I collected all of I I sit down. I'm talking of I'm not talking of it. I'm talking of a meeting that started on Saturday around 12 on that on Saturday and did not end until 2:15 a.m. Sunday when I was driving to my house. And by Monday, the revision has resumed fully. And you know what? We have to okay, So, what are your demands? Which ones? Let us prioritize these demands. Which ones are the most important? And you think if the government makes this one, two, three, you can go back to work, and then these other ones can be done. So, I also then spoke with the head of service and so which ones are your own grounds that you cannot, that you can shift? So, we met with both parties. I'm sorry. Okay. And then there was now one call condition. The doctors now said they also wanted to be paid for those months they did not work. So Mr. Governor to now said they can go to places. That as a matter of fact, if they insist on that, this this will begin the process of recruiting new doctors. Next, I said no, we will not do that, Mr. Governor. He said, I'm traveling. He said, well, call me. He said, I'm going to Australia. He said, call me anytime of the day. This college government was working with us in that team. He was the commissioner for establishment and training there. So, then crafted the final resolution and, and all of them. And all of them were today, but I, it was here, but I know that by the time I was calling, by the time I was calling the governor in, in, where he was, it was around it was around 3 a.m. or so but the I said so when bridge closure I said and they have decided that they will not insist on getting paid. They will not put it in the community. But I appeal to your magnanimity that we please pay them for those period and they will also work extra hours so as to be able to and they are paid. Now, again, what worked? The two conflicting parties and somebody they trusted. You know, so that's why we must never do with our, our trust quotient. And of course, I've already alluded to written communication because sometimes when people are angry, they 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 go to the realm of the spirit and start engaging in mobile to go and they can't even articulate themselves very well. So, okay, can you write? Can I write out this demand for you? Say, and this the things, your point of pain. Yes, say yes. Thank you. Then you go to the other part to the other side. And tell me your pain points. So that person also you do both. Okay, okay, can we eliminate this? Can we do this? Can we can we do a win-win? So and then of course, why do you have already said this, which is also linked to number one, attentiveness. Even when you have the privilege. Like why be all open us of going into some to see some governors and holding his own? Ensure that you you treasure that moment as your moment as an advisor. Or you go to see your CEO and enjoy that moment, treasure that moment as an advisor to him who is able to say, Sir, I think we actually need to be seeing this policy, sir. And this is why. To give him the visit because we talked about that, that I always go to any meeting I go prepare armed and dangerous with all my facts, all my figures. Just give me 10 minutes. I always ask for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, one hour, we'll be there. <laughs> yes, sir. Just on the same issue of just pushing yes, and lots of uh, responsibilities of the community as a have we considered the, if you're dealing with the food standard as a Okay, that's a very good, that's actually a very good question. So let me, let me tell you, I've dealt with such. Let me tell you what principles that have trust issues open. And you will find this consistent. They, they release information in three books. Huh? Now, they then look back at how you manage the ones they are released. Once they see 
So there was a government anytime I go into it and leave it, he has a camera. So he will be watching if I am stopping to see to speak to some of his aides. Usually when I'm leaving his office, I'm stopping out as if I am running to catch a fly. It's deliberate. Because I don't want to leave him wondering. Is it what we have just discussed now? Yeah. Then our security agencies have something they could be called the MTA mantra. MTA mantra. Need to know mantra. Observe it. No matter how close you are to me. I mean, uh, my brother Yashego put it. He knows quite a number of the governors aides who are close to me. Unless, unless they tell me that the governor told them he told me. If they say something that the governor told me, I will feign ignorance. I will feign ignorance. What am I doing? I'm guarding that trust quotient very generously. Yeah. Before somebody will go and say, I'm back, I'm even the strategy to say that I'm even. Yeah. It's called need to know mantra. Let's observe it as public relations people. That was a day. One of the governors, I promised my state, my chapter chair, as we were coming from the airport, just call me. Just call me now. And so there was a so one of these uh, eight came to me, I was in the state, one of his aides came to me in the hotel and was complaining to me about certain things and all that. So I listened, I said, okay, what's up? Unknown to him, I was aware of those issues. And one of those issues has to do with a succession plan I am advising this principal about it would have been foolish of me to tell him what I was planning to tell his principal. Because if he just go ahead, you buy it, Mr. Jayetu has said that uh, he's going to tell us that that oh, should do this, or oh, that should do that, and all of that. So it's a need to know me. So there was a day. Someone who didn't know me. One of the Friday is we know we as PR people, we go out to go to eat uh, fish. Soup and all of that. So, one of those days we were sitting down, we would think this gentleman, a few people here know him because he's a journalist, you would think he probably shared the same bedroom with this governor in question. And he kept on talking. You know, in fact, that was the day. And I sat down there. So, as we were about leaving, somebody now tapped him. I said, Do you know what this man does when I go? Said, I don't know, I don't know. He said, well, that's, that's his public relations consultant. He almost made it. <laughs> he almost made it. So, the need to know my track is one of our quickest ways to earn trust. Now, my governor told me he will be traveling out. He said, I said, we should go out. Uh, uh, sir, I think we should go and see the governor uh, on Tuesday. Uh, me, I know that the governor is traveling out on Tuesday. I'll say yes. Uh, yes, we we'll there, we should. It is not in my place to now tell him that. It's even worse amongst, I mean, I don't know if this plays out also in the corporate setting. There are eight political aides who sell information about the principal's movement. That will be on. It's for a. You understand? Then the man will go and get a travel agent that will get C for B for the for that market who wants to see the man. You know you are sentenced to be with him for six hours if it is UK. <laughs> if it is UK, you are, you, are, you are in the same prison in the air yes, for six hours. So so there are people. So there are people who do that. But well, you know what? You will find that some of them get to the office the following morning. Just say that they are 
their principals have left the night before because they've lost the trust. And this can also play out even in the corporate sector. Let's deal with information on each personal basis. Not every information we should share. So, and then empathy, showing empathy, showing compassion, embracing diversity and inclusion. This is playing out. You might realize that even the conflict is just about people. It might even be on the basis of religion. That the person holds certain fundamental views of his faith. And if you be the bridging point, you be the, the person who fosters diversity in that organization, you will be trusted. You will be trusted. And there will be people that are not but it's an analogy. In fact, it's even an imam who is very well respected in his body. How come YPO is very close to YPO as a pastor? And he feels very comfortable with that because YBO has learned to embrace diversity and inclusion. That's our role. And you will realize that you can solve, you can resolve, you can manage a lot of conflicts when you are in that place. Um, okay, so of course, this also speaks to say, embrace different, different points of view. And now, emotional intelligence. I mean, there, are, there are tons. Of materials on, on, on emotional content. That was the day we commissioned the report for the gate, the government. And the report, the research report was bad. The result was bad. Inkirulu Video Ojo knows this story. He said, Ah, no wonder this man trusts you. So I think well, when the research company submitted, and I'm glad why we all said a lot about, about research. Mr. President, and I do hope NIPR will also take up this. What stops NIPR from, long, from conducting a research on imagine your friends and sharing with God and sharing with the federal government and calling out the predictive the predictive analytics from it that if we don't do XYZ, this is how our youth are going to start behaving in the next five years. And you will be, you will be surprised that youth brands will pay the NIPR to have the full edition of the report. Or they will say, come and, come and workshop this for us and tell us the implication of this for our brands. So, when I got the report, the report was back. And I called the government. I said, Let's, let's. I said, I want to come and see you. I said, The report is ready. I said, I walked all night on it with my team. I said, But I don't want to present to your team. I want just yourself and your wife mm -hmm. in the room. I said, hey. Yes, I said, That's what I want to do. So I went to, so I went, I explained, I said, let me start with the bad news. First, this is the bad news. Show me the slide containing the bad news. I said, now let me show you the good news. Okay. We as PR, we must understand data. We must understand how to let our clients make sense of big data. Because this is how things flow. You start with research, you go from research to what is called insight. You move from insights, you generate the strategy, you then go from the strategy and develop a plan. Okay. So, but I didn't know what I was doing that day. I, I, I didn't know it was emotional intelligence. Because if his aides had seen that report, eh, by the following day, most of them would be after another time. They would have left the matter. So I shared the report with me. I said, now let me show you the good news. This is what's going to happen. This is how we're going to be. And you're going to win this. I said, take this to the back. And get ready to be. Both of them laughed. 
you don't accept. I use your accent, yes, I'm going to accept we're going to make you send them. And we won. Last slide. Last slide. I close up the local government. So analytical abilities. You must show curiosity. When okay, so you know that I've seen I've seen CEOs activated at Yes, What exactly is the problem? I see that. Take my phone. I'm the baddest copy. You know, my copy is my first team. Completely useless, guys. No. Right. Right. Okay. Sir, this is not the problem of the copy that gets team, sir. Responsibility of this state rests with the management, or we can solve the problem. I want to cooperate with the chief. I will solve this problem. Give us seven days, we'll turn this up. Yeah, really, can we not say yes? Now, you know what? I've also earned the trust of the corporate affairs guys. I've also earned the trust of the CEO. So, let's show curiosity, let's ask questions. Where are your pain points? And I'm pleading very passionately with this tribe of public relations practitioners today that that is how we get to the place of influence. Be interested in the pain of, of your principals and your clients. Listen active, actively. We will turn this way around. Say, hey, don't worry, we'll get to work. We'll come back to you when we need and tell you what we need. That's how we can chat with money. If you're driving, the type of pickup that the white is driving all over town. So, Mr. President, I think there's something on there here. Can you say which of the president? You don't use Mr. President. <laughs> 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 It's not our problem. Conflict among three people. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into problem. Let's put on the problem solving card. On step as where there is money. I beg you the name of God. I swear there is money in this business. I am when we go to clients. Sorry, the agency says, "Oh, sorry, sir, we are not an agency." We are consultants. The same way KPMG helps you cut through the products. We are here to help you solve the reputation problem. We are professional problem solvers. Sir. So when we send them the bill, they look at them. These guys, they are different. Let's, get, let's put on the problem solving card. Brainstorming abilities, sense of humor, of course. Sometimes when People have been wearing times for too long. They tend to be all times. <laughs> so throw some humor on the table. Uh, Break the hands, and then you see people losing up. And then, of course, um, this, this, the, the, this, the smart sense of designating sanctions. And of course, other skills, your own calmness, your own intuitiveness, and ability to manage stress. If if you have ever engaged uh, C-suite executive CEOs when their organization is going through crisis, you will know that you yourself you need to be the stress manager in the entire equation. Uh, who helps them that right? thing? I mean, so let me give an example. I was I was on the phone. I've just finished a conversation with the governor of Lagos State when the 21 story building you know, came down. He was going upstage in Rome to deliver his speech. And by the time he time he got it, he drove straight from the airport straight to the site and it was there till past one year and by seven o'clock in the by seven o'clock in the morning 
he was on the phone. Again, they are saying something that I said to him at 6 30. He quickly called me again and said, Okay, uh, I said, Sir, we need to set up, you know, a situation room right there at the counseling desk, bring professional counselors, do this, do that. I said, Okay, call this, call this commissioner, call the commissioner, call the commissioner, tell him that where you were at school, tell him that both of you put up, just call them. And those things were set up immediately. All the government officials closed this one second. Now, and then I said, he said, call me, call me, call me. I said, I'm not going to call you. You need to rest. I said, you need to rest. I said, I will call you in the evening. Because he had not slept from that time that he got back to the, to, to the state house and a few minutes to two. He was awake again in the morning. And he came back at past 11 to the site of the crash he did. I've been told my time is not So we also need a lot of patience. Separating ourselves. That's why I said, don't die in their war. Don't get involved in, in the camps that they form. We versus them, don't get involved. Make sure that you are the trusted neutral party that all the warring factions can talk to. And then, Let's begin to close with this word of Marx. Ricardo says, Conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. Conflict is inevitable. We, we've gone through this process to say that conflict is inevitable, but combat, com, combat is the optional side. Effective conflict management is the bridge between the inevitability of conflict and optionality of combat and destruction. Thank you. So at this point, uh, I would like to appeal that all our questions should be directed to Mr. Yomibani Dokusaya and to our national president. Thank you. Okay. No, I, I didn't want to interrupt a good presentation because uh, not disappointed me. This was what we expected. During the course of your presentation, you made some three points that struck an out with you, or even several nouns. Uh, that I just need to actually hammer more on me. Uh, I think you were talking too about me. When you said you did uh, make the point that we needed to be to make ourselves indispensable to our process, that's very, very important. And uh, once you are able to achieve that, I work on a similar of course, your integrity, of course, the trust portion is talking about integrity. And you know, it's not an event, it's a process. It's not something that you do today. But once you are able to earn the confidence of the principal, you are more than good to go. You can even, if I, even your discretion can be forgiven. Even if you are indiscretion, rather, because it can, discretion can be a two edged sword, actually, depending on what perspective one is coming from. As a very young child, I became a president of the And even at that point, of course, there was a lot of immaturity. There were a lot of things I did at that point, and I'm sure if I were to become a president today, I wouldn't do them. But I took them for granted, and they worked for me. And, uh, it is all about trust and uh, the inquisitiveness, the patience, and the ability to look power in the face and take it your peace of mind. But you have to be smart the way you do this. For instance, 
you don't disagree with the principle in public. You defend even those things that you don't agree with once they become a policy. But those that are above you need to know where you stand on those issues. So that even when you are defending it to the world, they know that this guy is not doing it wrong, but we know he doesn't do it. Because he has let us know that he thinks something else about them. As a press secretary, I was not a member of the executive council. But I was so asserting that some fundamental decision would be taken at the expo. And the military administrator would be saying, look, one, call Mukta so that we don't take a decision and he comes and begins to blow grammar. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you understand. Yeah. When you talk about building the capacity or having the ability to be trusted by parties to a conflict, I happen to be a media advisor to a governor in the political dispensation. And uh, you know, it's more dangerous, the minefields are more dangerous in the political era. But I, for two things, one, I know that with all due respect to them, these guys are not both dying. They are not, especially when they are fighting between or amongst themselves. You, 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 you don't get to be part of it. I'll cite you a personal example. I had a friend, a very close one, who wanted to be governor of my state while I was serving another government. Of course, he went off stage to see. As a friend, I knew there was no, he was not going anywhere, but he was being sponsored from upstairs. One day, we were very close friends, right from secondary school. We attended the same school, same class, same university. So we came, we, and we were from the same, we are from the same area. So we, we, we have come along, but we still are. Yeah. But then something happened. We I had a chat with him in his house. He's going to avoid this thing you are doing. He was so cocksure that the guy upstairs was going to make it work for him. I said, well, how are you going to be fighting an incumbent that is at least seen to be performing? Uh, even those that are not performing. Defeating them is not easy, especially in our kind of plan. You, know, you, are, you, are, you are too scared by your boss. He's beatable. I said, I believe he is beatable, but I don't see you as the one. So we had that. <laughs> ah, you know, do you know who's behind me? I know. I said, I know the person that is behind you, but let me tell you, let me tell you something. Do you know what is uh, backing you? He said, No, tell me. I said, He's backing you to come and keep this governor here busy because he has added that the governor is after his own seat somewhere. And once they are able to come to some accommodation, one day, one day, they will want to eat and they will ask him to escape them. I didn't know I was such a prophet, actually. And something happened about a year and a half or two years later. It didn't turn out as they wanted to eat. Of course, they had made up. All of us, including that, my friend, were on the underwent of both of them. We came back from the function, and um, the bigger guy looked at somebody and said, Ah, of course, you was a party chairman that he asked. And incidentally, that my friend and I were in the same room where we were holding our hands this week. When the guy, big guy said, um, Mr. Chairman, um, the governor and I want to discuss something, can you excuse us? It happened. Now, when you have integrity, and I remember as an eight, I was able to build the kind of trust that you were talking about, that even opponents of the government found me a comfortable uh, party. I was accommodating them, of course, entertaining them in my office. You know, not even people from the from a different political party. Even from within the same party, you know, they have a lot of conflicting tendencies. So, and when you are seen with a tendency that uh, is perceived to be the enemy, you people begin to look at you one way or the other. And at some point, people were beginning to get uncomfortable and they reported me to this guy. 
We've seen we've seen so 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 much in this movie. We've seen so so we've seen so. I think the governor got so saturated by that kind of thing and delayed the meeting with you. And then I told him the same thing you said here. I said, number one, sir, some of these people are not necessarily enemies. They are people that see things from a different perspective. And even if they are enemies, probably their enmity is born out of some misconception or some misperception. If you engage them, they are likely to see one or two things your way, even if they don't see every other thing your way. And if it is just one way you succeed in winning them to see your way, it's an achievement. And some would end up confessing to you that, ah, now that we have had this from you, we thought the governor was not that way or this way. So if you make yourself that uh, trusted, you are likely to be to be to have a flip actually and both sides will continue to trust you they will continue to engage you the last one on the integrity portion thing in fact it got to a stage that the governor was telling people that Mukhtar was the only person i don't i go to sleep with my two eyes closed with whoever he is seen with at least that trust a portion that they don't. But you have to be principled even against your boss. I know that is the difficult part. Sometimes we get afraid of losing our job that we just do anything. But you have to realize that there is life after that job that you are doing. And you are likely to meet people. And I will cite you this example that really humbled me. It really, really humbled me. Precisely in 2009, I met a fellow at the airport in Lagos, a Kaduna guy. And I hadn't seen him since we, we left 2007. I hadn't seen him, I think 2009 or 10. I hadn't seen him since 2007. He was one of those that were always around the Bongo. Yeah. So I saw him. We were both flying to Kaduna and our flight was delayed. So, like Gaia said, we were imprisoned in that in the lounge for about three or so hours. And we got to the and said, look, there's something I've been wanting to see. You know, I did a lot of respect, some respect for you since some time 2003, and I've been looking for an opportunity to tell you. I said, what? So he now began to relate something that happened. If I had to struggle to really remember what it was. Then he said, do you remember that in 2003, in the thick of the re-election politics of 2003, you were called to the governor's office, blah, blah. then I remember. And what happened was, I was sitting on the governor's office, he said, come on, come on, come on. So I went there, they were meeting in the, on the conference table, of the governor and the governor, and I said, okay, this is what we are going to do. The long I showed of it was that they were actually trying to do something and they had it. There was this guy that was given the governor very long time and at some point people felt the governor could be defeated actually. And now we, they needed to do something and they said, well, Mokar has his own media, especially in Lagos. Let's get him, give him whatever money he asks for, let him go to Lagos, let him finish this time. And from what the guy related to me now, the governor now told them that the town would not do that. So um, you are the one that you are, you are too indulgent to him, that's why he does this, he does that. Are you not saying him? Is he not to talk? They, they were on the, on the governor on their kind of center and he said, okay, that was when he now told me. I came. He now explained what it was they wanted me to do. Of course, I didn't say no, sir. I would do this. I said, Well, why don't we do it this other way? Then that guy picked up. I didn't know about it. Of course, I was just putting the dogs together after I had been. This was some 2008, it was some seven years after it had happened. <coughs> so we got arguing with that guy. No, we want 
And so we were arguing left, right, center, and the guy now uh, hit the nail of the hammer. Look, we have not come here to ask you for your opinion. A decision has been taken, and uh, what we want you to do is go and implement it. We don't care how much you're going to ask for it. Mention whatever it is going to cost, it is going to be done. I said, well, as a professional, I'm giving my advice to you that this is not the way to do it. Okay, uh, if you're not going to do it, just tell us. And I looked at him in the face, I said, I will not do it. And the governor just dismissed me and said, go. <laughs> and in fairness to the governor, from that day on, up to the time we left office, and up to 2010, he never raised the issue with me, and I too completely forgot about it until I met that guy in 2010. Now, what does that say? He said the respect that I had with him was that I was, I had such principle that even the governor knew that there was a line below which I would not operate. And I didn't disappoint him. The other one that really got me to melt was the was the realization that if it had been the opposite of that that I did, that would be the face he would be looking at me. So we have to be careful what we do, even if it means taking some risks, but the risks should be made. Thank you. Thank you. So it is the rule of protocol for me to be talking after the president has spoken. <laughs> so with these few words of mine, I believe I've been able to convince you and not convince you that it's our rule to set it in office money. Thank you very much, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Please join me again in applauding you guys for a wonderful presentation and for keeping us all away in spite of the pandemic and so on. If you have programs with you, you see that we are gradually coming to the end. And I think this this presentation already incorporated all the things. So what is left? Because this program is being put together by the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, and we thought it's proper to have a little brief about it. But before we move into that, we still want to seize the opportunity of the president still being with us, because if not for Benevolent spirit, he will be in Lagos by now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he will be in Abuja by now, but because he's still here. Uh, so, Mr. President, we would like to kindly invite you to help us make a little presentation to our last resource person for today. Actually, the president made a little presentation. So, this will be the president and Chairman of Council of NIP, I will make a presentation to the president. No, it's a small presentation. Yeah. I take, I take back my word. Please, guys, step forward for Mr. President. Silver, gold, and silver. We do not have this, <laughs> but we have a conference bar. <laughs> we have a conference bar in each. As is as so many in stuff, in <laughs> including an in Ira, <laughs> which you really didn't see <laughs> yeah, because it is not it is not meant to be seen. Yes. It is meant to be used to be deployed. Electronic. And uh, don't open it here. Of course, we are transparent, but we don't want you to get jealous because some of the things that are in here are not in there. <laughs> So thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. I'm not doing that job. Oh, okay. Oh, okay.
asking us was it directed to oh, okay. Thank you very much to the two presidents. I would now like to invite Barrister Karibi George to just present a few highlights about what NIPR is, what it does, and what it stands for. Briefly, let's welcome him. Thank you. Please don't retire to clap. <laughs> the President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, if you look at uh, page six of your program, page six and seven, you will see a brief about NIPR. And then the program also says that Samuel Tobio Seloka would be presenting about NIPR. My name is not Samuel Toby Oseloka. My name is Karibi George. So please uh, make that correction first. So that tomorrow you won't see me on the road and stretch out your hands and say, Ah, Samuel Oseloka, how are you? Okay. I'm Karibi George. Now, this program. Oh, sorry. Yes. Karibi George was the NIPR chairman in River State immediately before Samuel W. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> and, and he also succeeded me in council. Oh, and he's okay. He has to be yes, 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 he's running after me. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how many of us are aware that this director's conference has been put together by the Nigerian Institute. Of public relations. Okay. If you if you are aware, please just raise your hand. Okay, sorry, if you're not aware, raise your hand. Because <laughs> I don't want to presume. Anyway, the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations used to be known as the Public Relations Association of Nigeria. It was formed in 1963, the year I was born. By yes, by Yes, I'm a small boy. <laughs> no, I have a smaller voice. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. By Dr. Sam Epele and some of his associates. In 1972, the organization was rechristened the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. And their objective was to properly institutionalize the practice of public relations. In Nigeria, just as they had gotten experiences from outside the country. As God would have it, through their sensitization and lobbying efforts, in 1990, precisely on the 1st of June 1990, the federal military government promulgated Decree 16 of 1990, the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations Practitioners Decree. Ladies and gentlemen, when Nigeria moved from military to civilian regime in 1999, some of the laws enacted by the or decrees made by the military regime were repealed, while some were retained and put into the corpus of new of, of, of uh, laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The NIPR decree was one of those retained. And in 2004, when those laws were codified, it became CAP N114 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. Section 1 of CAP N114 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria establishes the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and empowers it to determine the standards of knowledge to be acquired by persons seeking to be public relations practitioners. Section 19 of that act provides that 
if you are engaged in the business of public relations by whatever name called, and you are not a member of the NIPR, you are guilty of an offense and liable to various sanctions, fines, imprisonment. The fines and the imprisonment are very small, but you know the consequence. It means you can't stand the election in Nigeria again if you are convicted. Or more, or more interesting is the fact that section 19 subsection 5 of that act provides that any secretary, officer, director of an organization that condones a person who is not enrolled as a member of NIPR practice NIPR in that organization or engages such a person as a consultant is also liable. That is called the principle of vicarious liability. <laughs> it means let us leave the small driver that had the accident because he does not have capacity to repair the vehicle or damage he has caused when he had that accident. Let us hold the big man that has capacity to make that repair. So brethren, the point we are making here today is a thank you for attending this director's conference. As you can see, the NIPR has various programs that help us improve our practice. And for me personally, director's conference is one of my favorite programs. The reason being that the atmosphere is both formal and informal, and we can talk freely, happily, even interrupt the presenter without any problem. Isn't it? Yeah. Are you not enjoying it? So why don't you want to be part of it? If you look at that, we will see the structure of the institute. You know, uh, there's the president and chairman of council, the vice president, and then 20 other members of council, some elected and about uh, five appointed by the federal government, the Ministry of Information and uh, Culture. So if you are not a registered member of the institute, this is an opportunity for you to register. Thelma, please, member of council, I, I hope we have the forms. If you don't, e we, like we have the e-copy. Okay, we'll, we'll try to let you have the, the forms so that you can fill and then go. And in we the are there before e Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we... we <laughs> <laughs> depending on what you study, depending on what you study, because Channel 4 of the law has the qualifications for direct membership and induction. But if, like me, you do not study mass communication or any of those qualifications listed there, there is another window for you to be admitted through what we call the Masterclass Program. It's an intensive one-week course, training course, intended to bring you up to speed on different aspects of public relations, including, and that's the area that interests me a lot, the laws regulating the practice of public relations in Nigeria. The N114 LFN 2004 is the parent law, but the council has, pursuant to its powers in that law, gone ahead to enact bylaws. The first bylaw to be enacted was the Code of Ethics. And professional practice. You can you can see how the council's mind is working, so that everybody will know the limits of what is acceptable and what is not uh, acceptable. Subsequently, council has also gone on to establish, I mean, to enact the creation and administration of state chapters, giving everybody opportunity, no matter where we are in Nigeria, to be part of the institute through a state chapter. Then there is also the PR CAN bylaw, establishing the Public Relations Consultants Association 
of Nigeria, of which our immediate uh, past speaker at this event is the current chairman. I think we are clap for him. Again. Thank you. You know, when you say president and chairman of council, sometimes your tongue will twist and you'll be saying chairman when you mean president. President, please. <laughs> the secretary is here to have No. Okay. Okay, all right. So, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please let's take it seriously. The Institute also has mandatory continued professional development courses that enable you to improve your skills in specific areas and grow in the ladder. During lunch, one of us remarked that he's been an associate member since 2008 or thereabouts. And I, I, I felt sorry for him because as, as I informed him that time, it's a self-inflicted injury. I was admitted as a graduate member in 1994 and advised, and I took the advice I wrote the Institute's professional diploma exam. And I have risen through the ranks. By the grace of God, I am now a fellow, fellow since 2012. So if I can do it, you can do it. In fact, the, 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 the president, you know, uh, Considering uh, my standing and uh, willingness to cooperate, even appointed the secretary of the fellowship advisory committee. So those of you who are members seeking to be fellows, you can lobby me. <laughs> <laughs> are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, the categories of membership. Uh, we have student members, we have graduate members, we have members, associate, sorry, associate members, the members, and then fellows. fellows. Um, now, there, even if you are a fellow in, say, Public Relations Society of America or Chartered Institute of Public Relations UK, and you do not enroll as a member of NIPR, Section 19, and all its various subsections can still catch you. Yes. That's very far. Yes. In Nigeria. Yes, in Nigeria. <laughs> the, the, the only good thing is we have some reciprocal relations uh, with some of these sister organizations. And so it is possible for you to use your membership there to enhance, are you with me? To enhance and speed up your enrollment here in the NIPR. So that's what we should do. Any questions? Yes, sir. You know, not a question, just to add um, the fact that the NIPR is also a member of the Global Alliance for Communication. And in fact, our immediate national president was a member of council. Uh, he's a member of council. He's still open. Sorry, I didn't know he's still running. Yes. So, um, why am I saying that? I've had, sorry, I'm not taking your position. No, 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 no. You are no. yeah, just adding to me. This yeah. is the team now. So, yeah. the man is learning how to sensitize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've had them to convince a lot of people regarding why it is important that we start to always make sure that we have the facts of the law when it comes to relations. Um, I'm an advocate of um, legality. So no matter how we make the teeth, if you are not registered, even if you are a director of publication, technically you are, not, you are not a professional. Am I correct? So, but I have a question here, so I can talk. So I tell people that when we say I have CIPS, okay, I have CIP, I'm sorry, I mentioned those institutions. They are the same. In UK, we can't practice as probation professional if you are not a member of CIPR. Am I correct, sir? So why should I not do that also for Nigeria? Because I remember when some of my colleagues were to come and we want to play and they told us we have a CIM marketing. Good. But the law is there. 
that you still have to do this year. So I'm saying it because I've had three conversations today to, to encourage us, for those of us that are already in very tight position, to encourage our um, colleagues to sign up and be active. It's another thing to sign up, it's another thing to be active. The institute needs to run, and then, which means we have to pay our dues, we call the complicate, we do our MCPs. All these things, these are what the institute that does to ensure that um, we keep things running. Um, so I give it back to my boss there. It's just my contribution. Thanks. Wonderful contribution. Yes. Um, in 2015, in order to bring our database up to speed, the council instituted the recertification program. If you registered as a member or associate member of the institute before then, but did not do recertification, please seek it as one of the things to be done to regularize your membership of the institute. Please do so. And, and rise, cooperate, um, participate. You know, who could have thought that small boy like me could be a state chapter chairman? And I've been going under those back many years ago. You can imagine. Member of council. Okay? Member of council. And now, chairman chapter relations committee. And secretary, your fellowship member. advisory committee. Two months. My name is here. Chapter relations. Uh, Fela Lee is also here. Chapter relations. Thelma. Thelma is Thelma. also here. Chapter relations. So, Please, it's, it's, it's good to grow, it's good to flow. I exactly have an admin crisis, primarily right now. But I was listening to all the presenters talking about not being in solar, but to um, get all the information, knowledge you can from other areas in order to be able to get to the level of CEO, right? Those are the things they told us. And I know public relations has made me change, change the face of administration in my organization. I'm a dangerous person. They know me as dangerous. Because oh, yeah. if, you, if you discuss anything with my chairman, and then I go afterwards, and you have not discussed with me, to give me perspective, the danger is it will all be reversed. So I'm the one to be loving. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to suggest that uh, last year when we got out here, some organizations came up with them like in their numbers. And that's what I would have been and we should uh, encourage. <clears throat> Giving the giving the answer. Yeah. So I want to feel that when I came here and I saw that there are so many of my colleagues from the central bank, I was very happy. <coughs> some of the just don't don't really understand it, why they should send two, three people, four people to the board. But I went to my management and I made a strong case that I can't be attending this in the new every year. That some of my colleagues need to come on board. I think that's a good thing to stay for me and encourage as many of our professional colleagues as possible to enlist as a member because. We are making reference to UK and American. This is our country. We don't have any. No matter if you like, we, whatever you like. If you are not their own, you will not participate in what they That's the way they are part of our country. So it's left for us to decide that we need to you know, build a final you know, institute uh, that will be respected you know, corporation wide and country wide. That, that is our decision there. Thank you very much. Finally, before I leave, let me unbush my president and the Education Advisory Board. Please, if we have a reasonable number from this conference, may I request that without delay, a masterclass be organized for all those who want to subscribe. <coughs> president. You understand, you, understand, you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying if we have a good number from this conference, 
Council Education Advisory Board, without delay, organize a special master class to harvest them immediately. It's my prayer answer. It's not an ambiguous prayer. It is. <laughs> my prayer has an answer. You can clap for the question. Thank you. Let me turn the mic to the MC team. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation on NIPI. Okay. Okay, the president wants to say something. Well, I don't, I don't know how many of us here, I don't want to use the cube word, are practicing without requisite license. But part of the requirements for upgrade from one grade of membership to other is uh, participation in how many MCPs? Three. 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 So those of us that are members here, we we had a virtual council meeting without you know, and the council agreed that those of us that are members should consider participation in this director conference as one MCP. Thank you very much, President, for that. Okay, the chairman of the directors conference actually wants to appreciate the president for further elevating this conference. And Yes, I want to thank you, Mr. President. It has always been my desire that apart from what we gain, you know, from the team, that we should also add, you know, a kind of reward. And I'm happy. And I want to also please, I'll tell my chairman, of course, we are chairman of council, but I'll inform the chairman of the educational advisory board to which I'm also a member, that going forward, one of the rewards for attending the director's conference is that it will be taken as one master class. Sorry, one MCP is. Should we be adding that? Great, right. So it no, is it is for this one. It's for this one, but I said going forward. Yeah. Going forward. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So Chidima, yes, ma'am. Please make sure you also give them an official letter that states that they have attended one. And we have a previous Yeah, so it's very easy so thank you very much, sir. For members, for those that are members and those that are certified. Yeah. So, uh, to, for today, uh, thank you very much. And then uh, I also happen to be a member of the uh, fellowship uh, advisory board. So if you think you are due for fellowship and you want to do the process, I'm available to give you free counsel. To be loved. Oh, <laughs> oh, of course, you must have spent 10 years as a member. As a full member. As a full member, full member before you can be a And you are supposed to write a thesis. Well, that's what I said. Come to we, 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 we close now. Can I have two volunteers to just share briefly their experience from today's uh, event? Just two. Okay. okay. One one male, one female. So while the male is up, the female should get it all at one point. <laughs> 
Okay. Just to make it happy. I did a wonderful experience today. We started them uh, with the presentation by White News, and the, there are a lot of takeaways from this uh, presentation. Affirmative PR, know a little about the loss, tell your own story. I can go on and on. Before we get to Jay's uh, presentation, he talked about conflict management. Don't allow the conflict to get into a crisis. And I think there is one important phrase he used your trust quotient with your stakeholders, the various stakeholders that you are relating with. He said that there are certain secrets that you should go to the grave with. Am I correct? <laughs> As a PR person. And he mentioned some of the things that YP also talked about, and NAP also added to it that we are cancelers. And then she said we even need to read books on cancelling so that you understand the process of cancelling. He mentioned logic that you need to understand logic in order to do your PR work very well. I think I can go on and on, but I think it's been a very rewarding and enriching experience. I want to say thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Anything you want to add from any I think you are summarizing all. So that brings us to a wonderful conclusion of day one. But let me just announce that tomorrow, we will have a tour of the resort in the afternoon after the presentation. We have the t-shirts for all registered participants, so endeavor to pick your t-shirt and we advise that you put it on tomorrow. You can wear your jacket on top of it if you like, but so that when we go on that tour, we go in the uniform manner. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And I think the chairman of the planning committee also said we can have a, a brief networking at the lobby bar as we step down. So thank you very much for taking <laughs> 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 <laughs>